All right, Shalom. <clears throat> Order brothers from the Great Mill, so I'm branch out in Des Moines. Uh, we're going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elects within the nation of Israel. Excuse me. And Israel consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And we're also going to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Ray Millstone, and rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, so, uh, you know, not quite sure what uh, the title of this lesson will be, but, you know, me and the brother, we, um, we got off work. We was talking in the spirit at work. You know, it was just me and a brother and, um, you know, it was just a, a constant reminder, man, of, of uh, keeping, you know, things in perspective, man, that all this is temporal, you know, counting all things but done. All right. As the scripture says right here, I'm going to go ahead and start off with this, this is the book of Second Corinthians chapter four and verse. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 17. It says uh, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So. You know, we're catching hell, you know, and we go through different things, man, but it's a light affliction. And, you know, it's all about perspective because we have to keep in mind that, you know, the hell that we're catching, first and foremost, we're worthy of what we're going through and more. All right. As the scripture says, we're being punished less than our iniquities deserve. Um, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how uh, uh, how uh, the chastening pretty much is for our profit. All right. And it worketh. Uh, in us, uh, a work, a good work in us, right? So these are things that we have to keep in mind as we're going through the chastisement, the hell, and affliction, right? Mm -hmm. So it says... Hey, you can read uh, verse 16, slide. Kind of, I got you, yeah. I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man pan perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Right, and, and that's right, because I wanted to make mention, because like, okay, so yeah, the outward man is perishing, and right, the, the new man is uh, uh, being renewed in the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shah day by day. So every day is a is a different battle that you have to go through to what? To improve the inward man that's within you, man. And the inward man is talking about your mind, your spirit, your, you know, your true spirit. It says uh, in book of uh, Romans 12, it says uh, um, that we be renewed in the spirit of our mind. You know, that's how we become new men. You know, it's all about becoming becoming mature and becoming a, a new man in the spirit of Yahweh Shemuel Shah. We have to cut off our old habits, which is that old man, you know, cutting off our old habits, which will hinder us of our growth of becoming a new man. You know, rather it be women, you know, rather it be a, a time that you put in forth doing uh, this, that, and the third, or whether you give yourself over to it too much, you know, mm. it's all a, it's all a balance, you know, within this uh, within this ministry. You know, but, uh, you know, I just want to make mention on that uh, on the 16. Right, right. And that uh, you just mentioned that through the spirit. Uh, that's that's actually written in the book of Colossians. The third chapter it talks about mortifying our members, you know, which is killing yeah. off, you know, this flesh, this man. All right. That's why the scriptures, you know, through the spirit uh, it talks about being uh, circumcised in our heart. And uh, when you're circumcised, all right, the physical act of circumcision is cutting off the excess flesh. Mm. Yep. All right. In the book of uh, James, it talks about uh, put aside the superfluity of mm. naughtiness. Yeah. All right. That superfluity is what the residue or the remains of a person that he had prior to their conversion. Yeah. Right. And this is a constant process of chipping away at the old man. I always use the analogy of a of a sculptor. All right. You know, um, you had marble sculpture sculptures uh, more so in the ancient world and so on and so forth so you would have a, a sculpture a sculptor excuse me that would take a slab of marble or whatever you know uh, material that he was using and then he would have an image in his mind that he was chipping away at that big block at right and that's what we're constantly doing is chipping away at that old man all right chipping away of uh, th uh, that old person and it being conformed or molded to the image of Yahweh Shai, mm. right? So this is the process that we're, we're, uh, we're constantly going through, you know, just going back until the, the point that the brother was mentioning. But I'm going to go back to this in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse uh, 16. For It says, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So, you know, even though it may hurt, all right, uh, it says for the chastening of this present time, 
mm. may not be joyous, uh, but grievous, but, but nevertheless, it yieldeth yeah, the forth the peaceable fruit yeah. unto righteousness. So it doesn't feel good. All right. Even denying yourself, it doesn't feel good. All right. Because what feels good is doing what your flesh, <laughs> whatever it wants to do. Of course, that's going to feel good. But what? That's a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to keep that in mind. All right. Having the mindset that our forefathers had of delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. They were willing to put away the temporary for that time or temporary emotions. All right. Or just an example, even with Joseph. All right. See, Joseph was being tempted by that Egyptian woman that was uh, who was a Potiphar's wife. If I'm not mistaken on um, uh, the specific uh, uh, man it was, but I believe it was Potiphar's wife. And it says how pretty much she pulled upon him every day. All right. She wanted to sleep with him, but he wasn't going to get down and commit adultery. All right. So physically, he could have fell into that temporary satisfaction. All right. But what he denied himself. All right. He denied himself of that pleasure. And this is the mentality of our forefathers. Before we continue, I want to read this in the book of Hebrews. All right, because we have to have that mindset of delayed uh, gratification. All right, willing to uh, look beyond the temporary feelings and emotions that certain things could uh, give unto us at that point to do the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, He that resisted the pleasures crowneth his life. All right, and this is the mentality that our forefathers had. They resisted pleasures. All right, Yahweh Shai being the, the greatest example, or right, a man that loved woman. All right, pursuing back to King Solomon. All right, he fell at the woman as Adam, right? So when he came as Yahweh Shah, he completely conquered that. Yeah, because um, even what you was just saying, it made me think about, uh, I, I I believe it was going back to Joseph, where it talked about how he um, he didn't want to um, partake in sin for a season or something like that. Well, that's the spirit, because this is what I'm grabbing, and it oh, speaks okay. about Moses, but since you, uh, let me see... Uh, I'm going to just get, I'm going to okay. just read that. That's the spirit though. But this is the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23 it says by faith, Moses, when he was born was hid three months of his parents. I should have started down, but it's all good. It says, because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the King's commandment by faith. Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. All right. It says, uh, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High. Now, just keep in mind, him being the son of Pharaoh's daughter, that gave him a certain status. Mm -hmm. That gave him a certain comfortability. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was raised up in, in, in riches, right? So this is how he was brought up. But what he refused all of that, he refused the status, he refused the riches, right? It says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So mm. we have to keep in mind that these things are temporal. It is only for a season. Right. All right. The scriptures even talk about how certain individuals have received their consolation. So Man. for a season, you're comforted because you got money, you got riches and all right, whatever the case may be, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, nah, because I, I be thinking about it because we always make the statement about like how people are like trying to get rich. At the times where we we live in here, it is we're living at the end times. People still trying to get rich. People still trying to drop their next album. People still trying to go to the league. People people still trying to run it up. And it's like, bro, this society is crumbling right before your eyes. But you don't see it because you're caught up in the in the, the you're caught up in the now. You know, we, we we can't be caught up in the in the now. We gotta be caught up in what's to come. You know what I'm saying? It says that uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of the of it that followeth. We're 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 we have our mind set up set upon the things that come, all right, which is the kingdom, that city that set up that set up on a, a broad field, man. You know that's why the scriptures told that. See, Yahweh he he already told us what to do. He told us to set our uh, uh, Affection. affections on things above and and not on things below. All right, he's told us to store our treasures up in heaven. You know what I'm saying? And not upon earth. So we already have our mind set on toward the things to come, man. The the the, uh, uh, the future, man. Okay? Rather than having our things set, set upon earth where it says, uh, well, moth and rust do uh, do corrupt. You know what I'm saying? Where things yeah. are being dissolved. Yeah, so on and so forth. Things break through and steal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, because uh, uh, like we was talking about, you know, um, at uh, when we was at the gig. It's like, man, it's it's... It's things that uh, the Lord will allow you to go through, all right? Because mm -hmm. one, 
see, we have to have this mentality, all right? And the Lord is molding us into that mentality of really counting all things but dung. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read that and I'm going to go back to this just to make sure, you know, we, uh, we, damn it. I, I, I got you. I can get it for you. Precepts, damn it. Yep, Salakia. Yeah. No, no, you good. But, uh, you can, um, yeah, you can just grab that. Come no, I got you. This is, uh, this is, uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, yea, doubtless I'll count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, my Lord. That's right. It says, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, my Shai. As a matter of fact, keep reading Salakia. No, no, you I want to jump the gun. No, you good. It says, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Yahweh Shai. Right. So we have to be molded to this mentality of counting all things but dung of not caring about these things. And the reason we yeah. we know that we have to get to that mentality is because what, man? The scriptures talk about how the elect love not their lives unto the death, mm -hmm. all right? Meaning they didn't care. As a matter of fact, uh, let's let's grab that. You know where that's, uh, could you just uh, okay. search that up? Yep. And read in another translation because uh, I believe it's in the NLT where it's worded a particular way, you know? And this is what we're being molded to. See, the Lord would allow certain things that you might care about to be taken away from you just so your heart isn't too inclined into it all right and just so that you can get put in that mentality of look it, it wasn't shit anyways you know you might have a woman that you might you know care about you love and you could be too into her whatever the case it may be or your heart too inclined or even too comfortable to a degree or whatever the case it may be and the lord can have it to where she bug out cheat on you leave you right so that it puts you in that men mentality of like man this shit don't matter anyways man you know, keep you on edge, not too comfortable, you know, so certain things that we go through, man, where the Lord is like keeping us in that proper mentality or to not care. So then let's say that, you know, that situation happened, the Lord strengthened you, you got over and everything like that. So now when you, you, um, may be in another situation where you're involved with, you know, another woman, or you could be involved with something that, you know, your heart could be inclined into, man, you're not putting too much of an investment into it because you know that, like Yahweh Shah read, uh, like Yahweh Shah told us, man, set your affection on things above, all right, uh, uh, on the kingdom of heaven where neither moth doth corrupt or thieves can break through or steal, see, things can be taken away from you, all right, things are corrupted, right, this ain't it. You know, and the things that we go through is putting that putting us in that mentality, man. That's why the scripture says he that getteth wisdom becomes quickly without care. All right. So as we grow in this wisdom, man, we should be caring less about the things of this place and be uh, detaching as opposed to becoming more attached to this place, man. But Salaki, I don't want to keep rambling. You can go ahead and read that Bible question. Yeah, Salaki. Well, uh, how was the word? Again? Uh, uh, it was uh, damn, I forgot what I had quoted. Salaki. It was um. Yeah, I was trying to search. I was trying to make sure I had the the right words in the. Uh, no, it's uh, man, it's suffer, escaping. Suffer, suffering death. Suffering death. Yeah, it's like it, bro. I was. No, no, nah, nah, it's all good. It's all good. I ain't even gonna worry about it. It's all good. Uh, we'll go back and uh, read this in the book of Second Corinthians. This is Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, and verse uh, seventeen. It says, for our light affliction, which is, oh, that's what it was. The water y'all about Shemiah, which I was the revelation. Okay. Right, in the book of Revelation, it says they love not their lives to death. Con, so you con. can put, uh, no, no, I got you. Con, the water. Yep. And then, um, yep. Uh, this is, up. uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Reading the KJV verse in the first, and then you can read it in the NLT. Con, this is, uh, Revelation 12 and 11. It says, and they, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of the testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Right now, it says they love not their lives unto death. Now, Bible Kashad, could you read that in the NLT? Come on, just give me a quick second. Yeah, this is a uh, Revelation 12 and 11 in the NLT. It says, it says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb. And by their testimony, and we know that the lamb is, is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, even uh, John the Baptist, uh, he, he mentioned how, uh, how he said, behold, the lamb of, uh, he said, the, behold, the lamb of the Lord, I believe, in, uh, in the that book. That taketh away the sin that of take Israel. Away the sins of Israel, that's right, all right, and that's a representation of our Lord Yahweh Shai. But it says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony, 
and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Right. So it says they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. So for a person to get to that point to where they don't even fear dying or they don't even care mm-hmm. about dying. You think they care about their relationship <laughs> with a right. woman more? Here right. it is. They're willing to die. You think they care about anything else more than that? Right. <laughs> you know, their heart is clung to anything. You know, here it is. Their life is on the line. It was like, look, we'll get beheaded. Fuck it. You think they care about anything else more? You know, their job. Right. You think these di- different individuals care about losing their job? Losing, you know, hell, certain loved ones and everything like that. So it's things that we go through that's building us up to get to that. Because it ain't like you just wake up and you just, yeah, I'm there. You know, right, right. you just wake up and I don't give a fuck about nothing. You know, it feels like that. <laughs> All right. You know, because you hot when you first come in and everything like that. But yeah. then, you know, you go through different things and it's like, all right, well, we're we going to see. Right. You know, it, you go through different trials and tribulations and challenges where the Lord proves that or it might show that, you know, it might reveal that, you know what, I, I my heart is too inclined or too clung to these different things and so on and so forth, man. All right. Maybe I am. All right. Um, uh, my heart is too far into certain things and the Lord will uh, uh, press those buttons, so to speak, to see where we at. All right. And reveal those d- different things unto us, man. All right. So once again, man, that's why the scriptures talk about a mean estate is not always to be contemned. All right. Mean estate is a lowly estate. So when we're brought low, it's not a uh, uh, something to contend because the word the Lord could be working something in us. Mm-hmm. All right. We're putting that in that fire to reveal certain things. Or we're putting that fire to show forth what men are men we are. Right. You know, to strengthen us as we move on in these different battles, man. Right. Now, uh, going back to this in the book of Second Corinthians, was there anything else that you was reading? No, that was it. That was it. All right, I'm going to go back to this in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four and verse uh, uh, 17. And it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So we have to keep in mind, man, all these things are temporary. All right. We was even uh, speaking about it on the line, man. When you consider the time that we've been on this earth. All right. And the time that's ahead of us, man, this is so minuscule Mm -hmm. for the scriptures to say that a thousand years is like a sand that is is like a a grain of sand on the on Mm -hmm. the seashore for the scriptures to say that. And it says that the days of uh, Israel are innumerable. Right. We haven't even begun living man it says esau is the end of the world jacob is the beginning of it that followed we haven't even got to our beginning all right we haven't even got to our birth okay scripture says uh, shall a nation be born in one day all right look we aren't even in our in our the flesh that we're in ain't even our bodies that we finna be in in eternity where this is just we're renting this out we've been written out all right these this flesh all right <laughs> for a couple of days here All right. You know, compared to the eternity that's ahead of us. And I say a couple of days, according to, you know, the amount of time that we've been here in this flesh until we get our new bodies that we're going to have for eternity. So we haven't even began living. So when you really think about things like that, or I say for myself, when I consider things like that, man, it really it really helps me to not even care about a damn bill that I was worried about earlier that day or. You yeah. know, or this or that, whatever little carnal BS that tries to, you know, be on yeah. your mind, man. It helps you put that shit away quickly, man. So, like, you go yeah. ahead. Well, no, nah, I mean, I mean, slacking, I mean, to cut you off, but nah, like, you good, when you actually think about certain things, it'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm dealing with this situation now for these, maybe, okay, I'm, I'm going to be dealing with this situation for like a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. But mm-hmm. then it's like, after those two weeks, then, it, then it's like, I'm not think I'm not finna be worried about because here it is. You'll go through certain things and and we can all we all have have uh, certain things that we've dealt with before in the past to where it was like we're not thinking about those things no more. Right. It you seems heavy during it. Yeah. But once you got out, it was like, uh, yeah, it's like I'm not worried about this situation no more that I've dealt right. with in the past. I'm not worried about this particular female whether it's whether it's a female or whether it's a job. Was whether it's a car situation, whether it's anything, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like it, it, it could be anything, you know what I'm saying? Right. You're not worried about the pre- those past situations that you that you used to deal with. Yeah, you know you're you're moving forward, you, the, and but 
at the same time, you've grown from those situations. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord is doing with us, man. We're, which each, which each uh, uh, trial and tribulation, because that's what it says in Sirach 2. It says, uh, it says, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare our soul for temptation. All right. And not, and it's not only just temptation, but also trial and tribulation. You know what I'm saying? We have to prepare our minds for these different things. That's why the Lord puts us through the fire. You know, because it says that the fiery trial, which is the uh, which is the try you, you know, what I'm saying just to show you that those trials are uh, uh, synonymous with, with, with fire, you know, because it says that the uh, that the it says the, um, that the furnace. Uh, uh, how's the word in Sirach? It's like it. Uh, the, uh, the second chapter. Yeah. yeah, yeah For yeah. gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That's right. That's right. So it's we adversity. are being accepted in the furnace of adversity. So when we go through these different trials and tribulations, those are uh, 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 um, trials for us to be shown as, as, as gold, man. Right. You know, well, even Job said, he said, when I'm tried, I'll come forth out, out as gold. Then he described how he was going to come out as gold. He said that I will hold fast to thy steps and from that way I have not declined. So we show forth that we're gold when we, you know, hold fast to following yeah. these words and these precepts, even in the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. That's what separates the elect from the rest of the nation of Israel, which is the wood, hay, and the stubble being the, yeah. you know, those that's going to be destroyed, man. When they get in that affliction, they're going to they're gonna fold or they're going to make decisions that aren't pleasing inside of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, not saying that we don't make mistakes. All right. But even King David, you know, he made him his mistakes and the Lord had mercy upon him. But what his heart was still towards mm -hmm. the Heavenly Father, he still fought to serve him, you know, you know. So that's the mentality, man. No matter what we go through, no matter what we suffering through, man, hey, we got to continue to fight. Hold on. Hope for mercy. The scripture says how the Lord will have mercy upon those or. Uh, uh, yeah, it says the Lord uh, delights in those that hope in his mercy. Roughly paraphrasing that in the book of Psalms. All right. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to read this verse 18 again. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right. So, you know, we got to keep our mind focused on those things. All right. Not getting caught up with the day to day. Yeah. All right. Uh, as our forefathers going back to that in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says how what, man, they, they saw those promises afar off, man. And they they confess that they were pilgrims, man. We're just passing through once again, man. We got a whole eternity, man. Once again, th th man, look down at yourself right now. That ain't even you. Ain't, that ain't even <laughs> your 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 home. Yeah. All right. That flesh that you in, man, you, you know, this ain't even your real estate. This ain't even, you know, you you just renting this out. You know, for the meantime, until you get that eternal body that'll never decay, that'll never have a blemish. Yeah. All right. That'll never, you know, break down on you or whatever the case it may be. You ain't going to have no pain. You're not even in the flesh that you're going to be in for eternity yet. You know, we haven't even gotten to that point yet to where we got changed into those new bo new bodies. And that's just the beginning. Yeah. You know, so what? Why, why should we care about, you know, these things that are here right now man you know you're gonna be well off in the kingdom there's so much ahead of us man that the lord has prepared for us man there ain't gonna be a dull moment and those are the things that we need to continue to remind ourselves of and meditate on to strengthen us to endure the trials and tribulations the hell the sufferings right because that's what yahweh shai did said for the glory that was set before him he endured the cross and despised the shame we always mention you going to that word despise it says to think little or nothing of it. All right. And that's compared to what? The glory that was set before him. So because of the reward, he thought little or nothing of the suffering because it, the sufferings of this present, as we read, are not worthy to be compared. It's incomparable, man. Way more ahead of us, you know? So we just got to keep our mind on the prize. All right. Separate from this and now. The more we detach, the closer we get to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. The closer we get to our Lord, man, and, and, and sooner, man, before you know it, we'll be out this bitch and we'll finally be able to live as it is written in the book of Colossians, man. Your life is hid with Yahweh Shai. That's when we begin to live. All right. When Yahweh Shai is glorified throughout the earth, man, that's when we begin to live, you know. But did you have any other precepts you wanted to hit on? No, nah, that, that was it. Yeah, man. And, and through the spirit, like I said, you know, this is just through the spirit. You know, we was having spiritual conversation and. You know, wanted to bring out some precepts on this. And, you know, Lord's will is set a fine, uh, strengthening, man. Having that being said, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash.
Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful of life, pushing out this word in all sincerity and truth. With that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom.